one of the things I absolutely love about Hunt Showdown is the craftsmanship that has gone into the map design. Between the two current maps there is a lot to explore, and a wealth of detail that can go completely unnoticed. As you familiarise yourself within these sandbox environments, you also start learning how to use things like the terrain and obstacles to your advantage, whether that will be working out the fastest route from A to B, or discovering areas worth setting up for ambush on the unsuspecting. As a race against others is a huge factor in the game, it's quite common to learn a lot more about your surroundings and what they have to offer as scenarios unfold. And as positioning is key to winning your battles, it's essential in time to learn this. Even if you don't fancy yourself as a skilled player, having the ability to preempt attacks and use your surroundings can offer a huge advantage. In this episode, I want to have a more in-depth look at some of the compounds, and I want to start off with one of my favourites. is because it can be very challenging on offense and defense. Due to the layout, and often enough, a lot of scenarios can result in stalemate, and there's always a psychological factor that comes into play that not many other compounds can actually create. There are four unique access points to the underground area, and all four are particularly constricting when it comes to attacking, because they can be so easily defended. This goes for both game modes, quick play and bounty hunts, solos, duos or trios. When it comes to hunt, for strategy, we can never cover absolutely everything because everyone has a different playstyle, and sometimes it can be very difficult to predict how players will react to your actions. So we want to look at how to maximize and use this compound to your advantage, while taking into consideration the dynamics of gameplay. In the case of a solo player, whether that's protecting the wellspring or the bounty, it's safe to say that staying underground and taking the time to prepare defenses can only maximize your chance of success. This is something certainly advisable if you are the wellspring holder in quick play, as enemy players will know where you are anyway. For bounty hunt, playing proactively topside can actually be quite beneficial. Using the highest point in pitching provides a 360 view all around the compound. This is particularly useful for scouting out incoming enemy teams and taking them on at range. However, it's not particularly the best place to be as it doesn't offer very much in the way of concealment or cover. The outer walls and brick workings provide a decent cover and due to the compound's relatively small size, you can break line of sight easily. If you're not loaded out for close quarters combat, you are limited in options where to go, and often enough many battles result in cat and mouse games, usually only leaving you the option to go underground anyway. Outside the wall surrounding the compound, the foliage is pretty dense and offers excellent concealment, which is perfect for ambushing incoming players, especially those that are less cautious when on approach. However, using audio cues and positioning is absolutely key here as you cannot cover all sides of the compound. Of course, playing topside as a duo or trio comes with less risk. With great communication and incorporating any of these strategies, you can hold down the compound without any enemy team even setting foot within the walls. Without having a presence above, it can lead to incoming teams unchallenged and often enough unnoticed. The most likely scenario this can occur is of course when you are dealing with the boss and during banishment, or collecting the bounty, which is why it's always essential to prepare your defences. The only rule I follow when preparing defences is to always have an exit strategy. At pitching, this is extremely important as you don't want to box yourself in. Looking at the four entrances to the underground, I usually pick just one to keep clear but actively keep an eye on, while effectively blocking off the other three with traps. Exiting is easiest with either the ramp or the stairs to the south. The lift entrance makes too much noise and can give away your position whether entering or escaping. The ladder to the north can leave you wide open to enemy teams as the climbing ladder animation can leave you vulnerable upon exiting to teams across the water or even above. With a fully defensive loadout and utilizing items found in the environment, a solo player can easily lock down the underground covering all four entrances. 
The boss room is very much separate from the outer corridor, but can be accessed in one of five ways. So even if you wanted to cut access off to entire sections, this can also be achieved. Audio, of course, is extremely important for pinpointing enemies entering. Walking through traps or becoming injured, this is the right time to counter offensive players while they are vulnerable. But bear in mind there is always some form of counter for your traps. Unlike all noise traps, concertina and tripwires can be jumped over. To avoid them being detected, I usually put them to the side of an entrance or where players are most likely to move to. This gives attacking players a false sense of confidence when entering areas upon not immediately seeing any traps and getting caught out. Placing traps vertically to a narrow entrance or door can prevent attacking players from jumping over or even the option to disarm traps, as getting too close for that option will likely set off the trap. Poison bombs can be used effectively, harming the player and obscuring their vision. A well-placed and timed bomb can deter use of an entrance entirely, but this can easily be countered if players utilize antidote shots. Concertina bombs can be countered easily with dynamite. This saves attacking players time rather than hacking at the concertina and giving their position away. Just a note, frag grenades do not accomplish this as they are technically not explosive consumables. And of course, there's the poacher trait extremely underrated but for the sneaky players a must-have as this renders any defensive players of even hearing you remove traps with ease. Update 1.4 is yet to hit consoles and with update 1.41 announced it shouldn't be too far off. With this update comes the serpent trait and I can confirm that attacking players topside above the boss arena can grab the bounty within range. So defending players will want to grab that bounty quick or prepare for that exit strategy. Exiting the underground can be difficult if you've deterred enemy teams from advancing completely, as they will more than likely wait for you to come outside. Luring enemies back underground can be a viable strategy, as you can funnel and predict their advance with ease. Allowing enemies to fight underground turns the game almost into a traditional corridor shooter. Now again, CQB and melee loadouts will have a slight advantage here. Either way, more than likely you will have a fight on your hands, so timing and patience in the end will help the teams that want the outcome in their favour. With so many ways to play around a seemingly limited compound, play smart and plan ahead. If you enjoy this concept and you want to see more compounds covered, please let me know which ones and why in the comments below.